start streaming. Today on the Shrewd Dudes Podcast, we are going to talk about a few different things. In this week in satire, we're going to address how Daredevil continually thanks God that he is blind and didn't have to see <laughs> She-Hulk twerking with Megan the Stallion. Because that was, people. like, eye-burningly awful. It's horrible. <laughs> it was horrifying. Mm-hmm. In our rants of the week, we are going to bemoan the death of the Queen. It is an incident that we will remember for the rest of our lives. The changing mm-hmm. of the monarchy. As Canadians, this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, in, <clears throat> in our nothing to see here, we're going to talk about Olivia Wilde. And how she is distracting from her own evil by saying that Jordan Peterson is evil. That's just but terrible. he is not. Hmm. And then finally, in our douche of the week, we are going to address a South Carolina Democrat who claims that you should treat white people like crap. And I'm using a euphemism for crap. All of that and more on the Shrewd Dudes Podcast. All right, we are back. Hey, how's it going, bro? It's going all right. Today was a shorter day, and that was just like, yes! That's a weird yesterday day, sucked. Mm-hmm. Yesterday was a 13-hour day. Wow. I was Jeez, there until 8 p.m. And here I thought, like, you know, the only person I know that works longer shifts than you two is Graham. One of our buddies. He well, Graham does it. Shift. Yeah. Well, Graham <laughs> does a sleeping shift. Yeah. So he doesn't have to stay up that long. Mm-hmm. And his work is usually just like. Is it's different. <laughs> it's different when you don't have to be like, okay, I have a task that I have to do over and over and over and over and over again for the entirety of my shift. Whereas working with mentally handicapped adults is mostly just like talking. Oh, so he's basically just there. Talking. He's not necessarily yeah. like f- physically like talking, you know, going on walks. Mm. It's really chill stuff. Yeah, much more chill. I remember used to do that. I did. But yeah. there's no way to advance. And you just go crazy after a while. But mm-hmm. anyways, before we jump into anything, a uh, quick reminder, we our multi-streaming platform wanted us to pay a significant amount of money to the tune of about 20 bucks a month to continue mm-hmm. to stream onto four platforms at once. Mm-hmm. We declined that offer. So we're going to mm-hmm. s- cut down to two. So now we are only streaming on Facebook and Twitch. Uh, mm-hmm. Try and keep your comments to Twitch as it just streamlines the process. It's a little awkward to comment on Facebook or at least respond on Facebook because the video will automatically play. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, for just for future reference, during the live stream, if we're playing a video, I cannot see any of the comments that are on Twitch. I cannot see any of the comments, period. Because if I turn off the video, then the screen will go blank. <laughs> you don't want so, that. You don't want that. You want to watch the video. You don't want to watch yeah. me looking... All confused. All confused and trying to respond to some comment. So that's (laughs) what it is. We're sorry. Mm -hmm. But let's go into these early stories and then I can do some quick sharing and promotion. All right, let's do it. So first story in this week in satire. Oh, yes. I saw this and I laughed so flipping hard. Daredevil, <laughs> thanks story. God, he's blind after learning that She Hulk <laughs> twerked with Megan the Stallion. Oh, yeah. So, just a quick reference, Danny, have you watched She Hulk yet? I've seen enough review videos where, like, you know, people like uh, the Critical Drinker, uh, people like Ner- Nerstal- Nostalgic, places like that talk all about what these shows are doing. And so, I'm familiar enough to know what's going on in these shows, but I had not actually sat down and watched the show. Um, I mean, how much do you want to self torture? I mean, yeah, I don't no, want to self torture. <laughs> I'm I'm watching it, 
but partially because it's not so much self torture as it is. <laughs> it's like, cause people are like, Oh, like how can you comment and say it's terrible if you haven't even watched it? I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to watch it to give an honest feedback and honest review of it. I mean, it is, there it are, is kind there of are okay moments. A, it is, it is fun to watch a, a car wreck in, in mm-hmm. progress. I mean, yeah. You know, like, and that's what good. episode three was. <laughs> episode three was a train wreck. Mm-hmm. And it was just like woke statements. The only funny statement in all of episode three mm-hmm. was they're in the middle of court. And, <clears throat> there's like this elf and the elf is saying they're like oh yes like she is the daughter of a like an elvish ambassador in asgard so she has diplomatic community the judge is like she has diplomatic community in asgard and the elf stands up asgard is a people not a place and the judge <laughs> looks at her as nice as that is to say meaningful quotes from thor are not admissible in court I'm like, that's awesome. I'm like, that was actually a really funny line. That's true. But aside from that, it's really just like, oh, like this guy is such an evil man. And it's like, of course he is. Of course he is. And then it's, oh, yes. The the group that shows up and tries to take her blood is, oh, it's all men and they're serving a big, powerful man. It's like, oh, shut up. It's basically like, you know, being lectured. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I felt like watching She-Hulk would be. It yep. would be like sitting down for three lectures from insufferable, like, you know, like hardcore feminists. Yeah. Well, that, that first episode, that first quote where she says, I have to deal with this every day and I can control my anger infinitely better <laughs> than you. And he's just like, mm-hmm. And it's as it's she, like as you green green are it. so arrogant. <laughs> yeah. You are the embodiment of what a feminist should not be. Like that's the only reason. I'm mm-hmm. just like, did they actually make this show to try and point out how annoyingly evil third wave feminism or feminists are? Yeah, because that's before be us. It's like because that sort of makes sense in how you're depicting the show. Because mm-hmm. she's literally willing to kill people, not because they're like trying to assault or rape her, because mm-hmm. they're trying to ask her her name and so that they can help get her home. Because mm-hmm. they're like, okay, like, is anybody coming for you? Are you alone? Do you need help? Like, what's mm-hmm. what's your name? And she's like, I don't need this. And she's like, she goes into this rage and is about to kill them, and then they Hulk abducts her. Wow. And I'm like, whoa, that's messed up. And then it's like, well, maybe mm-hmm. she can't control it. It's like, nope, she can control it. She knows what she's doing. It's like, oh, so you willingly admit that you're going to kill men just for trying to help you because mm-hmm. you don't need no man. Anyways. Yeah, it sounds like the kind of like kind of mental illness that people don't like to call mental illness. Yeah. Which is people that have literally massive problems coping with what should be a very easy to cope uh, with uh, you know situation like you meet those people all the time you meet them you meet them at the store you meet them at the you know on the, on the train or whatever else people that just they will snap at you for the littlest thing They're like you you do not have good coping mechanisms that's Indeed. what this lady is oh yeah that's that's what she hoke is very very poor coping mechanisms and she has no problem admitting that Mm-hmm. Or like she thinks that she has great coping mechanisms. Oh but yeah, she... the show reveals. Oh my gosh, you have terrible coping mechanisms. But because you're a woman, mm-hmm. your coping mechanisms are automatically amazing. Well, it's it's the okay. The, the, like last thing, feminists like to argue that there's such a thing as toxic masculinity, but they never like to admit that there's such a thing as toxic femininity. Mm-hmm. And She Hulk is toxic femininity. Meghan Markle is toxic femininity. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence is toxic femininity. Ooh. There's a lot of toxic females out there. Um, and Olivia know, like, Wilde. We don't, like to, we don't like to admit them, but they are. <laughs> oh, we we will expose <laughs> toxic femininity all day long. All right. Well, tell us all what all day be. long. So, so based on this show, what did the Babylon Bee? Okay, so um, from the be? Babylon Bee, hmm. according to sources, Hell's Kitchen superhero Daredevil was heard overheard thanking God for making him go blind 
and saving him the horror of watching She-Hulk twerk with rap artist Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, yeah. I have no problem facing a dozen ninjas for the hand or my own, or even battling the diabolical schemes of the Kingpin. But when I heard about She-Hulk twerking, twerking with Megan Thee Stallion, I threw up in my mouth a little bit. He said in a gruff whisper, while perched on a rooftop gargoyle, it was the first time I've ever been thankful to be blind. Well, that's, a good, that's, a good, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I so people <laughs> who did see the twerking fiasco were appalled at the sight and began crying out for the Earth's Mightiest Heroes to save them from the torture. Others begged for <laughs> Thanos to return and end things once and for all. Josiah right. Smith, an eyewitness to the twerking, recounted the harrowing experience. It was also it was the most wretched thing I've ever seen, and I've watched Rings of Power. <laughs> he said, visibly shaken by the ordeal. No one can squirk with Megan the Stallion and call themselves a hero. It's, it's At true. It's publishing true. time, Daredevil was believed to be rethinking his entire purpose in life. <laughs> that is what required to be a superhero these days. I don't if I have it, don't know if I have it within me. I'm supposed to be saving Hill's Kitchen from falling into a cesspool of crime, but I'm not even sure it's worth saving anymore. <laughs> At publishing time, Disney Plus confirmed the next season of Daredevil will feature a dash number featuring Daredevil and Harry Styles in a dress. <laughs> so yes, rethink your life choices because it's going to get real bad. I noticed also that uh, Daredevil seems to sound a lot like uh, like like Batman. It's very similar. Oh no no no! There is the Daredevil growl and there is the uh -huh. Batman growl. I can okay. do the Batman growl, but it will cause everyone's everyone to go deaf. <laughs> I will quickly do it. Swing <laughs> me. Which I'm sure like yes. completely spazzed out my microphone. <laughs> it's like, Siri, you lie. You took me the wrong way, Siri. Why? Why you called Mary? Why? Why's your mom Martha? That's my mother's name. <laughs> Jingly keys. Fun for babies, <laughs> not for Batman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, so talking this, about this, other franchises. This was not the only show that is just <laughs> absolutely like, like devolving yeah. into like... Um, now, this is a show that I... The Rings of Power is a show that I have not watched. I will not watch until it probably goes through a first few months, mm -hmm. just because I know that they're like, "Oh yes, we'll make us, we'll make another season." If there's yeah. a lot of viewership in the first few months, and I'm like, as soon as those first few months end goes over, mm -hmm. then I will watch it, only to be like, eh, "It's not worth it." <laughs> it's like, how do how do I put it? The Rings of Power is like having a piece of a piece of poo and covering it in the most beautiful like candy coating that's basically the rings of power in a nutshell have you because you've watched the first few episodes it's it looks gorgeous oh i'm sure it does but it is horrible like the the characters the 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 wokeism just spoon fed into your mouth like enjoy huh you want some more wokeism Huh? Huh? Better like it, or you're racist. It's like, ugh. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I will not have a second second bite. <laughs> like I will not have a second helping of evil. No, thank. You. No, thank you. Anyways, but, uh, yeah. rightfully so, it's been lampooned by one of our favorite people. Yep, Seamus Coglin from Freedom Tunes. Yeah. How Hollywood reboots franchises, Lord of the Rings. Mm. So watch this and enjoy because it is amazing. It's so good. It is so into the flames! Destroy it! No, I don't have the strength because of my disgusting white skin. Is there a black <laughs> trans woman anywhere? I am. But I won't destroy the ring because it's actually good. The books were wrong. And then the characters repent of their whiteness and jump into the fires of Mount Doom. It's brilliant, <laughs> but will it piss the fans off enough? Uh, why don't we just... Try to tell a good story. Oh, you're such an idiot. Reboots aren't about making good stories. It's about taking something that people love and then shitting all over it. So then when they get upset, you can go, <laughs> white man's upset. <laughs> Here's what we do. Broke back Mount Doom. It's genius. Mr. Frodo, I'm so glad we're gay together. Me too, Sam. No, 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 no. That's not gay enough. How about this? And that, my friends, is how you tuck it in between your legs. Next week, we'll learn a binding spell for your chest. Gandalf, what if I don't want to be a transgender? You shall not pass! I'm going to write a bad review. No, no. You really want to upset them? Say it appeals to you as a Trump supporter. Brilliant! <laughs> it's like, what? Hmm? 
Become a member. <laughs> it is true because when you think about it, like the there's a pattern that they always follow. It's like it's almost like a game plan that they follow. They the somebody takes over a beloved franchise and they completely and totally wreck it. And then when they wreck it, then they when turn they around and blame like because they do. They blame the fans for being toxic and evil and like like you know and 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 the worst and all that. The, and and they the always worst. Well, like look at the the franchises that did that. Oh yeah, like, I you know. have you have Star Wars. Like mm-hmm. they did like a, a Moses. Horrible... It's like well, no, we're just critiquing because she's a very bland actress. Oh, that was from the uh, what do you call the Obi Wan series. Obi Wan series, but even like the original that that the the the, the, the movies with. Um, uh, with Ray and um, Finn. Oh, the and, sequels. Uh, They're terrible. Kylo Ren. They're terrible. But everyone said, like, oh, you hate women because you don't like it. It's like, no, you can, you can dislike a nope. thing, even if they're women. Then you have, um, oh, what were the other ones? There were so many other ones that, that they. Oh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters really is a good example. They like, oh, you hate women because you don't like the new Ghostbusters reboot. Like, no, we just hate, we hate terrible writing, terrible acting, and terrible comedy and terrible movies. You know, like. Yep. This is their their game plan. So right now with the, with the the rings of power, Amazon spent a billion, well over a billion dollars. This is kind of like their make or break kind of series. If they don't do well in this thing, they're the, Which is, the whole future. It's of so ridiculous will be because, in honesty, like the make or break Amazon show has always been one thing. What has been the the make or break Amazon show? Amazon show. Um, I'm gonna go with the boys. Okay, that's the new. That is the new make or break. Okay, but what's the old one? The OG is the Grand what's, Tour. What's the OG? Original Gangsta. Oh, I've not seen that one. No, no, no. Like the OG is mm-hmm. a slang for original gangster. It's like the the OG <laughs> teaching okay. Mexican slang. But mm. yeah. Amazon Prime Video, one of the biggest selling factors has always been the Grand Tour, hmm. in which there's supposed to be a new episode coming out really soon here. Hmm. And I, I love the Grand Tour because yeah. the Grand Tour, they just let the guys go and the guys are unfiltered, uncensored, and they will say anything. Yeah, we're just making And an people incredible. get so mad and he's they're like, Stop getting your panties in a fritz. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you guys are hilarious for that reason. But that's a good, that's a good original show. Oh, it's a great original show. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to continue but, making, I, they, they recently announced this for Grand Tour fans. Just a quick update. They will continue making videos until one of them dies. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I will watch all of them because they are truly phenomenal. Steven's following into the, their spell. Into their little spell. Oh, th- have, um, those guys are so good. Like even for non-car guys, the Grand Tour, mm-hmm. the final seasons of Top Gear, mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. You will be side splitting mm-hmm. from how funny they are. Yeah, I've never seen them, but um, so here, like what I know about like the the Rings of Power is that the they totally retconned uh, what's her name, um, Gladriel. Gladriel. Gladriel is originally was like you know a very like you know like like somber and very like amazing, um, you know, uh, dwar- uh, the elf queen or elf. Uh, what, what is she? A well, she, or something like that? she's like, a. now of course, Robin will get after us for our <laughs> lack of proper Lord of the Rings knowledge. She's uh, yeah, more of yeah. like a, well, she's, I wouldn't say she's a queen. No, but, but, but she's she a definitely she's reigns a, a over. She reigns over the forest. Yeah, but they, they turned her into a warrior princess that's incredibly insufferable, unlikable, and thinks everyone else but her is stupid. And she's like the most unlikable character. She, they they put in a whole bunch of race into a into an entire thing that the, where race doesn't exist, and it just it just went downhill. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll we, will. we will. We will. But yeah, just you it's know, kind of a it's a terrible early so early synopsis of oh this is terrible. Yeah, terrible show. But uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do let's so do um... let's, let's do the rants of the week, baby. Mm-hmm. Three, two, 
Bye. Red alert. <laughs>
He's completely compromised. He was already a bit kind of he would he was always living in the shadow of his brother uh, until he married Megan, and Megan, of course, is like the black sheep of the family, like she yeah, should. Be Megan because, wanted all the attention. Oh, uh, she was just insufferable, and, and she's she like, was, "Oh, Harry won't be king; it'll be William first. Yeah. Let's abandon the monarchy and strike out on our own and ruin tradition." It's yeah. Like, That's it. Yay. Let this be a lesson to you kids. Uh, you know, make sure um, when you marry someone, marry someone properly or else your life will be completely destroyed. Yeah. Marry um, a decent to... person. Otherwise, yeah. things will go oh, yeah, poorly but, for you. By the way, make sure you make sure you go you scroll down and look uh, to some of the pictures because some of the pictures are gorgeous. Uh, of the the responses, people like, you know, like responding, obviously, with 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 proper respect. I think I think a lot of the. Obviously, a lot of people like really love the really love the queen. I mean, she she was the by far the one of the most solid like things mm-hmm. that lasted out of like I think she like the queen basically is the last piece of what used to be a respectable institution and honorable like you know part of England. England used to be for for like centuries like you know a. a a, a source of strength and stability and what is good and all that. The queen was the last, uh, last part of that. Like she was. And with the, with her death, I think it's going to like devolve into a lot of, um, yeah, it's just not going to be the same. Prince Charles just does not have the same um, gravitas as she did. She, he never did. And he's actually a bit, a bit too politically compromised. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, um, the queen, I mean, like, I don't know. I've every picture image I've ever had of the queen. It's just this very thoughtful, kind, soft-spoken, you know, like you know, lady who is just always very proper. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who can have a problem with her. Um, now, the interesting thing is that this is this is like the the first actual change in a monarchy in most people's lifetimes. Most, I don't think, I, very few people are alive today that had a different monarch. And all the way growing up, I mean, you and I both had the same situation. Our money always had the queen on it. Yeah. Always. I was just, I'd never known a time when there was anything other. Anything other than, than the queen. queen. Now, I have seen some bills. I, I, so many people have showed me, like old Canadian bills, that actually had the, the king. And I'm like, whoa, who the heck is that? Yeah. I'm like, well, that's the Feels king. Feels weird. The, well, it's a weird thing, right? So that means that we're now going to have... You know, Prince Charles on our currency and Canadian currency, because all Canadian countries, or, or sorry, all Canadian countries, all Commonwealth countries, have the monarchy on their money. Uh, New Zealand, Australia, um, I don't know what what other Commonwealths are there. South Africa, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, any, any, I think so- yeah. South Africa is a Commonwealth. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's also like Australia is, of course, still part of. The Commonwealth, the Commonwealth, as well as we yeah. are, yeah. But yeah, which means which means that they're going to get, um, yeah, we're going to get a completely mm-hmm. revamped currency with like Prince Charles uh, on our currency. That's going to be the first time we're going to we we're going to get a king on our currency. And funny enough, this one won't last as long. Like it just won't, because Prince Charles is like what is he needs like sixties, like he's up there. Mm-hmm. And Prince and Prince William. Uh, is pretty much next in line, I think. So after Prince Charles, you're gonna have uh, uh, gonna have uh, William taking the, the throne. So it, it'll be <coughs> Prince it'll Charles is 73 yeah. years old. Yeah, so he's up there, and who knows how long he'll last? Like you know, yep. like maybe he'll last. Well, he's, he's he gets the best health care, so I mean, he might last a while. He might last a while, but, but, we'll, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, 10 to 20 years, maybe. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. So it's an end of an era. Um, uh, Queen Elizabeth, I I really appreciated having you as a monarch. I, you're like the most non-offensive public figure. I mean, in in our lifetimes. Well, she's kind of the end of one of the of these like non-offensive but well, like actually solid rule like public figures. Like yeah. <clears throat> if you look back to the '90s, mm-hmm. when I was growing up, mm-hmm. you had the Queen. Yeah. You had Pope John Paul II, he the last actually... like actual good pope that we had. Yeah, yeah. And we had <clears throat> well, Billy Graham. It's... Yeah, we Billy did Graham. have Billy Graham. He was, he was he was a big big figure in in Christianity. He was by far the, the person that everyone pointed to as the 
standout like you know figure for like that representative of Christianity, the one that people didn't didn't feel offended by. So he was great. Okay, we we actually have a very interesting comment. What from? <clears throat> so this is from Dark Sage on Switch. So I unfortunately do not rank Elizabeth as the best monarch in English history. In my opinion, Edward the Seventh is still the best monarch England has ever had. Hmm. Uh. He only reigned 10 years, but he laid the groundwork for what a lot of modern England is today and his modernization of the English military and respect for royal traditions, amongst other things, put him ahead of Elizabeth. I believe he also could have done more had he reigned longer than the 10 years since Victoria lived to 101. So mm. I, I admittedly do not know much about a whole lot of the British monarchy. I know a little bit more. Like I, uh, I know some of some of the more notable indi individuals. Mm hmm. But I'm not well informed on this at all. So, yeah, so, so go King for Edward, it if you want to inform us about the British monarchy. <laughs> yeah, so King Edward the the seventh, I guess. Uh, he reigned until 1910 uh, okay. from 1941. He took. I, I'm pretty sure he took over from uh, Queen Victoria. Yeah, that's what he was saying. And um, yeah, so like you know, he like Queen Victoria is another major figure. Uh, but what, one thing I do find interesting. Uh, about uh, just as a side note about like you know the English uh, monarchy is that some of the some of the most notable figures and the most like you know highly highly respected figures in the British monarchy are are women, which is one really interesting thing about the British monarchy. Mm -hmm. because, like, when you think about it, we have obviously Queen Elizabeth, who, who whose reign wasn't really significant, but that, then again, she reigned at a time when the monarchy was no longer a, it was just more symbolic. It, it, they don't really have any power. Um, Whereas Queen Victoria was actually a queen. Then you have Queen Elizabeth I, who was the queen, you know, that took over like most of the uh, 1500s. And she she reigned for a massively influential time. Um, those are three monarchs that had incredible uh, influence. Um, outside of that, you have some mm. really terrible ones and some really great ones uh, all throughout English history. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think this is a significant event in the fact that Queen Elizabeth II Reigned for so long. This is this is a monumental once in a lifetime kind of thing. Most people lived under her her watch and rule. So yeah, um, I will say though, I, I'm, I've already started running into people that are already pissing on the the queen's legacy. Yep, <laughs> and I'm just like, she hasn't even been dead 24 hours. She's not even cold. You can't wait. You can't wait to to jump all over her and for what? It's like, oh, she was like she was like responsible for. Um, was it like the disappearing of children? I'm like, give me a freaking break. She's, She's not a even like figurehead. In that. She's a figurehead. She had nothing to do with that, but you can't help yourself. Come on. Like, like you can't even give, you can't even give her one, one yep. day. I, I know that we're going to get a whole bunch of flack because they're like, I know that there's going to be a ton of people that are going to have this whole thing. It's like, oh yes, the monarchs are part of the like elite rulers of the universe. And I'm like, no, she's a white ruler. And she's like, you know, implicit, no. implicit in all sorts of like, not that this is, this is the problem. People, people today don't know how to look at history and historical figures to them. They themselves are the, the epitome, the greatest part of all history. Oh, we're the greatest. And everyone in history that doesn't fit their definition of what is the, proper like you know uh the proper person or whatever like that has all their views and beliefs the beliefs of what they do about about race about the gender about everything like that they're all horrible so mm -hmm. these people don't know how to look at history and that's a result they they just spit on everyone in history and think that they're great and as a result they never think that they can do it wrong because we're perfect and we're we're brilliant and we're the 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 top of the evolutionary like you know historical uh, progression. So no, it, Queen Elizabeth was a, like verifiably and objectively a great monarch mm -hmm. during her time. I don't, and I, I would be willing to like defend that. I think she was. Yep. Interesting yep. little side note. She actually was a trained and certified mechanic. Wow. She during the during the first, Second World War, <clears throat> she helped the royal royal military, the bring the British military. And she fixed and rebuilt and built the engines on their Land Rovers that they would use during their attacks.
So I thought wow. it was very That's interesting. Pretty impressive. That's I know. Really impressive, yeah. And apparently, like just being a bit of a motorhead myself, apparently when she was, she would only be allowed to drive on the property. Otherwise she had to be driven everywhere. But she mm -hmm. had like this fairly nice car that she would drive on the property. And mm -hmm. the queen's consort, Philip, who died last year, Apparently he would get a little scared when she drove because she would drive like a maniac. <laughs> I'm like, that's hilarious. That's pretty crazy. So little interesting tidbits and very interesting facts about the queen. But now we are going to move on to our newest segment, the nothing to see here. So <clears throat> let's watch. Always entertaining. So, this week in the Nothing to See Here, from Bounding into Comics, former Harvey Weinstein ally, Olivia Wilde says, Don't worry, darling, villain is based on insane pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> According to Olivia Wilde, the antagonist of her upcoming film, Don't Worry, Darling, is based on scholar Jordan Peterson, who she considers to be little more than an insane pseudo-intellectual. Sure. Wilde offers her thoughts on the Peterson during a recent interview given to Maggie Gyllenhaal on behalf of Interview Magazine. Therein, while speaking to the conception of the film's antagonist, Frank, portrayed on screen by Chris Pine, Wilde admitted that she and her pro production team based that character on this insane man, Jordan Peterson, who is a pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community. This video... Oh, I love how they use this video for, like, Jordan Peterson YouTube. Do you remember what the what this video is called, Denny? I don't remember what it was called. Up yours, woke moralists. That's the one. That I'm was like, I love that video. It's so yeah. good. So, quote: They're basically disenfranchised, mostly white men who believe they are entitled to sex from women. Explained Wild, and they believe that society has now robbed them. That the idea of feminism is working against nature. We must be put back into the correct place. Following a scoff of, well, they must be psyched. Things are going really well for them. For Jinlin Hall, the Spider Woman director added. Yeah, they're actually succeeding in many different ways, but this guy Jordan Peterson is someone that legitimizes certain aspects of their movement because he's a former professor, and he's an author who wears a suit, so they feel like this is a real philosophy that should be taken seriously. Oh no. Peterson has been a thorn on the side of progressives for years due to his aforementioned popularity, which he earned thanks to his rejection and subsequent dissection of the twin ideals of intersectional feminism and neoliberal gender ideology. Oh In fact, the man has become so hated that Marvel Comics and Dana Heasy Coates saw fit to turn the classic Nazi vin villain, the Red Skull, into a Peterson analog during the writer's recent Captain America run, mm -hmm. which was, of course, hilarious. It was just so dumb. <laughs> Ten rules for life, chaos and order, the feminist trap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of these things. Peterson responded to the director's accusations by issuing a statement where he both downplayed her claims that he is an incel hero and noted that he considered Pine's casting as the character to be a compliment. He has the reputation of quite an attractive man. <laughs> so that that could be worse. Mm -hmm. I also hope that Chris Pine at least done the zatorial splendor of my very poor public wardrobe justice as he pillarizes me in the latest bit of propaganda disseminated by the woke, self-righteous boars and bullies who now dominate Hollywood and who insists mm -hmm. on the production of such shripe. I cannot do a Jordan Peterson voice. His that voice is bad. so hard. It was a, it's a very difficult one to pull off. However, so. the, the thing is, like, people, <clears throat> the people who are trying to, um, trying to, you know, basically, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to, like, you know, get cheap shots on Jordan Peterson, Peterson are, they, they have to rely on straw men. This is the, the this is the saddest thing. People call him a pseudo intellectual, yet he is one of the most quoted and referenced, like you know, intellectual. He is the okay. Canada. Well, he's the most sourced um, professor at the University of Toronto by far. He's amongst one of the, the top, top one percent sourced. Um, in the, he's among, easily amongst the top in terms of psychology. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, I think he's in the top three or four percent in all subjects. Yeah. 
So like calling him this pseudo intellectual is just it reveals how absolutely inept you are in actually mm-hmm. understanding who the man is you're trying to critique. It's a, it also then uh, so they they try to like you know claim he's not an intellectual. Why? Because he's an intellectual, which gives him some kind of reputation of, of that he's a valid uh, cultural speaker and a really good one because he's you know a very prominent intellectual. But they have to like pretend like he isn't because mm-hmm. they can't they can't engage with his stuff. Uh, they try to like you know uh, do that guilt by association garbage. Try to say like you know oh he's an insult hero. Actually, no, he's incredibly, he actually speaks out very strongly against incels because incels are toxic people who believe that they're entitled to things. And he's like, that's not at all what, if you, yeah. if you know anything also, about like, George Peterson. Also, like, I've never actually, know. I've never actually met or interacted with someone who is claiming to be a member of this incel group. Yeah. Because everyone that I've talked to who is who has not been with another person mm-hmm. is either doing it because they're choosing not to, because it's something that they've chosen to do between themselves and God yeah. or them to themselves and their spouse. Mm-hmm. Nobody that I know is celibate because they don't want to be mm-hmm. like, <clears throat> I understand that some of these people do exist, but I don't know. I've never even heard of someone who actually says like, oh, women, like I'm entitled to sex from women. I've never heard of this individual. These types of people people do exist. They do exist. They're so rare. No. And that's the point. The point is what this is what the left does. This is what they always do. They find some group that's stigmatized in society and they try to they try to like make some kind of a connection between you and that stigmatized group. They did this with the, the vaccinations, like anti-vaxxers. Okay, there is a there is an actual, like, you know, a group, a, a, a small, smaller a, a group of people that will not take any vaccination whatsoever and believe all sorts of, you know, like the a very, very out there theories about vaccinations and what they can do. But they're a small segment. And they try to take that, that group and they try to apply that to everyone who who refused to get a vaccine during COVID. That's that's what they do. They basically try to like, you know, say like, oh, you're one of them. You're one of them. And so this is what they do with the incels. This is what they do with the, the far right extremism or fascists. Those do exist, but they try to like group you in with all of them. Same thing with the conspiracy theorist kind of label. These are labels that they take. They basically try to like say, you're the boogeyman. And they try to like lump you together with uh, these very rare and not very common people that, you know, like they try to like basically try to like throw it at you, see if it sticks. And Jordan Peterson, if you're an actually intellectual person, it doesn't stick. It can't stick because he not only does he not, uh, not only uh, is, is the idea of a being an incel completely antithetical to everything that Jordan Peter teaches. Mm-hmm. Peterson uh, teaches and, and and says that he also he also has actually come up and said like yeah I, that's not in any way what he what he wants for men so yeah, yeah well it's, I it's think what was nonsense. there was okay, actually well, a an interesting there was a claim that uh, a statement that he stated hmm. um <clears throat> about this many of the young men who whom the progressive and cancer culture facilitating mad woke mob, which contains no shortage of bitter self-righteous victimhood, brandishing virtue signaling, accusatory, and even outright demented mean girl feminists have shamed and tortured for even daring forever daring to manifest a single masculine attribute have turned to my work and found some solace therein. He said, according to the outlet, where was it? Where was it that he said? Cause he, he mentioned it's like, yeah, if, if all the women are denying you, then the problem is not with them. It's with you. Mm-hmm. So it's like trying to claim that he's this hero and of the incel community is absolutely nonsense. He's not. It's like saying, it's like, it's like what they said about Donald Trump. They said like, he's the hero of white supremacists. It's like, no, like he, like, do I even have to say it? He, he clearly is not a white supremacist, nor does he, like, support or, or endorse anything to do 
with white supremacists. It's just it's just a it's a cheap trick used by the left, and these are these are not like to honest try people. and delude and deceive people. That's right, and that's that. The sad thing is, like you know, people who are actually intellectually intellectually honest and smart can see right through it. Any conservative worth his salt will be like, yeah, this is stupid. But who who's who's this kind of like approach and this kind of thing? Who's the audience for this kind of thing? It's their, like, you know, it's their, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, their cult, you know, following, the, the leftists that actually believe this stuff. Because let's face it, um, like we talked about Jennifer Lawrence on Tuesday. Jennifer Lawrence has totally bought into the cult. She truly believes that the people who uh, support Donald Trump literally hate women, that they're misogynistic, that they're racist, and that they, they're like the worst of the worst. They're, they're, they're preaching to their choir. The people who believe this are people who are either hardcore, rabid leftists who like who want this to be true so bad that they will believe any any lie you, you spoon feed them. Um, or people who are incredibly naive and who've never really thought things And unfortunately, they're in they're in very large demand on the left. Um, and it's not an, an insult, like you know, it's just an observation. Like you actually meet and, and encounter people. On the left, who are so completely brainwashed that you're mm-hmm. just like, what? You're you're not even you're not even speaking clearly. You like, yep. do you can you not see the absurdity of what you're saying? <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, a great example of that is that Tim Pool had a a left a left wing kind of guy on his show, and he was actually like talking about abortion, and he was like, can you not see the absurdity of the position you're taking? Um, yeah. It's like, well, it's a woman's choice. It's a woman's choice. Mm-hmm. That, that was the whole, that, that's all he could do. That's, yeah. all, he, and he That's was so, all he had, and he kept going back to it over and over and over again. Yeah, but as I'm listening to that episode, which I encourage you to listen if you ever have a chance, um, I'm listening to it. I'm like, he can't see it. No, he can't see how absurd his his position is because he's so completely blind, brainwashed, by, and like, blinded. Yep, it's like the ideology has to take precedence over what is your own common sense. Mm-hmm. And this is what happens to people in the cult. They have to disbelieve what it's like obvious to them, because the the, the talking points overrule and trump anything that you may think. Yep. So it's this crazy. is actually a quick clip from Michaela Peterson on Instagram. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so this is something that she featured in response to Olivia Wilde's and Sandy. Don't Worry Darling has been based off of my dad because apparently he's king of the incels. Chris Pine's Don't Worry Darling character inspired by incel hero Jordan Peterson. Frank was partly based on this insane man, Jordan Peterson, who is this pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community. My dad is not pro-incel. So you're a young man and all the women are rejecting you. Who's got the problem? It's not all the women. That's right. a bad road to go down. If all the women are rejecting you, oh my gosh, it's you. It's dad. Hello. Hello, red girl. Can I FaceTime you for a second? I've I got love hilarious how, like, news. During this conversation, he actually oh. gets, like, you FaceTimes. have been written in as the villain to <laughs> Olivia Wilde's <laughs> new movie. Chris Pine's "Don't Worry, Darling" character, inspired by incel hero Jordan Peterson. So pseudo-intellectual isn't how you would be described. <laughs> so pseudo-intellectual is not how you would be described. No. I remember watching that is, like a, a couple good. hours after that information came out and I was like, this is hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, all That's of this, <clears throat> the reason we put this in the nothing to see here column is because Olivia Wilde did this to try and distract from the fact that Her previous movie was a complete flop. I forget what it was called, but it was a complete flop. Try and distract from the fact that her, the main actress or one of the protagonist actresses, uh, who is, oh, what's her name? She's also the new Black Widow character, uh, Florence Pugh, Florence Pugh. Um, she was angry at Olivia Wilde because Olivia Wilde was open about her cheating on her fiance and leaving her children for Harry Styles, who is quite a bit younger than she is. And Florence Pugh is very openly mad about this. And of course she lied about Shia LaBeouf quitting 
Because she said it was something about... I think Olivia Wilde said it was something about uh, having a disagreement in values. Yeah, something like that. And the Whereas, was like, oh. like, a lot of the texts, like, Shia LaBeouf shared the text that he had between himself and Olivia Wilde and showed mm-hmm. that it was not about that, that it was about the fact that she was abusive and disrespectful to everybody on set and wouldn't let anybody have time to rehearse before shooting, which mm-hmm. is nonsense if you're an actor. You have to have time to rehearse. Because you can't just instantly make every scene perfect. Hmm. So, she's she's trying to switch. She's trying to project her issues onto other people. Hmm. And that is why, this week, trying to blame Jordan Peterson as being an incel hero is the nothing to see here, because Olivia Wilde is just a gong show of awful. <laughs> Well, she she really truly is a, a really terrible person. So yep. if, if you're going to compare her and Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson is as respectable a person as, as they come, and Olivia Wilde is not. <laughs> so <laughs> you better not put yourself up against him. No, Malia. I don't even compare myself. Like Jordan Peterson, like yes, he he's dabbling with issues of faith, and I truly hope that he realizes that there is. Something to be said for Christian. I think he realizes that there is something to be said for Christianity, but he's still like struggling with actually making a commitment because making a commitment is very serious. And he said publicly, it's just like, this is a really serious thing if I'm going to commit to this. Huh? So I think he's, he's on the right path. He's just not quite there yet. By the but, way, the movie that, uh, that she made recently, the, her previous yep. called Wake Up. Called Wake Up? Wake Up. It's a short, it's a short film. Never heard of it. I know. I guess that's why. Because it flopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Didn't make it very well. Did not make it very well. But now that we're moving on, we are going to talk about the news that you may have missed to discuss the news that you may have missed. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So, going into the first story. Las Vegas Democratic official arrested in murder of critical journalist. A Las Vegas Democratic official was arrested Wednesday night as a suspect in the violent killing of a local journalist, Jeff German. Clark County Public Administrator Robert Tellis was escorted out of his house on a stretcher loaded onto an ambulance. Video captured by the Las Vegas Review Journal showed. German was fatally stabbed last Friday night outside his home in tweets over the past few months. Tellus accused the investigative reporter of smearing his political record and sullying his reputation in a series of articles, eventually costing him his primary election to his opponents in June. He had alleged that Tellus' tenure in office was plagued by emotional stress, bullying, and favoritism. Hmm. Jeff German may not be done trying to drag me through the mud to ensure that Democrats rally around Rita. They would have to turn most Democratic voters against me now, even... <clears throat> me even now when I should be irrelevant. Don't be surprised that the articles keep coming, he said in a statement followed by KTNB. Hmm. He tweeted on June 18th, looking forward to lying smear piece number four by Jay German, one trick pony. I think he's mad that I haven't crawled into a hole and died. <laughs> Jeez. He had been pursuing a subsequent story about Tellers in the weeks before he was murdered. Yep, that's just great. Now, of course, he's still a suspect. He's not officially guilty of this, as far as we know. But well, still, he's, uh, in custody, he's been arrested. Yeah, he has been arrested, and he is in custody. So, as we say, innocent until proven guilty. But mm-hmm. things are looking like he's probably going to be guilty. And if this was a Republican, this was a Republican who killed a journalist for critiquing them. Uh, oh my goodness! Be, it would be the end. It would like be like a. It'd be a, like a, this a, is the beginning of the MAGA Republicans destroying oh, yeah. American democracy. Here comes the violence that the Joe Biden was talking about. Yeah. Like praying that please, please come violently. But yeah, um, it's a Democrat, so it's memory hold. Just like there's another well, story which we're going to cover, which is going to be memory hold later. Well, really quick thing on this is this is a, this is something that you should keep an eye on because Democratic. And, and by the way, any, anyone who's on the Democratic or in kind of the liberal side, they are extremely like. They're so narcissistic that they can't—they can't even—they can't even imagine that they—that they've done anything wrong. 
mm -hmm. right? They, 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 they laugh and they completely dismiss any criticism of themselves because they're so, they're so self-involved. It's crazy. Uh, there's that one lady in, um, I think the Arizona race, like where, where um, um, oh. it was like, like, you know, the, the one where Carrie, uh, Carrie Lake is running. Yeah. Uh, the Democratic uh, lady who's running against uh, Carrie Lake, uh, she was actually convicted, not just accused, convicted mm -hmm. of, of actually, like, you know, committing racism on her campaign. And she wouldn't have it. She would not have somebody, like, actually calling her, trying to trying to hold her accountable. It was, like, it was crazy. She was like, how dare you ask me about that? She's like, I'm a journalist. I'm supposed to ask you <laughs> about my that. Job. Like, no, no, no. I am, I am. Like, I am beyond this. I'm, I'm above this. I am beyond this scrutiny and like all that kind of stuff right and this is by far not the only one uh gavin newsom can't stand scrutiny um they, they none of them can they basically just like spit at and scoff at any kind of scrutiny. uh it's bad so anyways uh let's move on to the irish times eu seeks to cap energy company profits and cut electricity use uh <laughs> like we talked on tuesday this is again Price controls never work because they 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 artificially suppress a product and they basically make make it less. Uh, they 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 create scarcity and black market, which is what they're going to do. Ugh, so stupid. Excess profits of energy companies should be rechanneled to support vulnerable households. But that's basically theft. Oh, I can't believe they're saying this kind of stuff. The European Union should rechannel. Rechannel is a magic euphemism. For we should basically steal, we distribute the money from these companies to help others. That's basically theft. It's what they're advocating for. And companies introduce mandatory reduction of electricity use at peak times. Uh, by the way, this is the uh, the coming um, uh, climate lockdowns, which they're basically going to force you to like not be able to like heat your home or to have power at, at various times. President Ursula von der Leyen told journalists on Wednesday, we we would propose a cap on the revenues of companies that are producing costs. The commission chief told journalists ahead of a meeting of the 27 member state ministers on Friday to consider a sweeping EU-wide intervention on energy markets. Uh, by the way, the EU is completely unelected, uh, like, you mm -hmm. know, hacks. This is, why, this is why Britain won't get out of the EU, because they're like, no, we're not getting some politician yeah, one really really good thing that boris yeah. johnson did was Absolute. brexit uh-huh yeah and that's a good thing we will propose to reach out all these unexpected profits so that the member states can support the vulnerable household and vulnerable companies uh you're a hack yeah dear god this woman should be in prison in, in addition we will propose a mandatory pro target for reducing electricity peak hours Ms. von der Leyen said, in the EU, gas and electricity plants are activated at peak times to cope with surges in demand, meaning that if usage is reduced at those moments, the use of expensive gas can be avoided. Uh, no, now all of this is completely and totally, um, this is not unexpected. These, these people are, uh, the people who, any country or any place that, that has, like, uh, that basically has blackouts that can't, you know, can't handle the electric load, uh, it's bad. It's bad management of your electric grid. Mm -hmm. That's what California is. Yeah, California that is definitely what California is. Bad. It's they're idiots and they don't know how to how to properly run their state. And these guys don't know how to run the country. Germany is a, a gigantic uh, cautionary tale of how not to do energy policy. By the way, but the EU. And by the way, the fact that this is happening all across the world in places that are. That are, are threatening. Oh, we need to we need to reduce our power uh, by force. This is not an accident. The fact that it's happening everywhere at the same time it shows you that there's coordination. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. So just watch for this. This is going to come more and more common in the coming years, where they're going to basically tell you, oh, you can't put your thermostat above a certain level. You can't uh, have power above this much. It's it's part of a, it's part of a coordinated. Uh, coordinated effort to punish people and to force them back into the dark ages. It's crazy. Yeah, of course. Here comes the young. One thing that does need to be noted is mm. that due to this kind of ideas and the fact that they're starting to cut electricity use, that they're making energy costs 
that energy costs are now super expensive because over the past couple years, and they did this in Ontario, um, those who remember a few years back about the beast, about the Ontario Hydro, Hydro One, I believe, was the company. The Ontario government, under Kathleen Wynne and the Liberals, made it so that there was a monopoly on Ontario electricity that you could only use Hydro One to power everything across the province. Oh, they and basically it, nationalized it. <clears throat> they nationalized it. And then Hydro One decided, oh, well, we have a monopoly and the government is making it so that everyone has to buy from us. So we are going to increase prices about tenfold. Hmm. And because that's what happens when you try and mandatorily switch to one company and that one company controls the entire market. They gouge mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening here as well is that there's massive amounts of price gouging. And so they're like, oh, we have to talk about the energy company profits. Well, the energy company profits wouldn't be an issue if you allowed competition. But you said, oh, well, you've been supporting our campaign, and so we're going to allow you to receive massive profits in the first place. And then when people complain, we're going to make it so that everyone has to turn back to the government and we can take control of your company and we can do all this. All of this is to push towards government centralization of power, and part of that is energy companies. There are riots, there are protests that are happening across Europe, and that's just, unfortunately, riots, when they get violent, just make it so that the government seizes more power because then they can impose restrictions because that's the people would rather be safe than hear, than have an opinion of the other side. Well, the, the big thing, too, is that um, when it comes to these kind of, uh, when they try to, like, privatize or try to nationalize any. Um, what they do is they take away choice. This is what this is one of the problems we have here in Canada. Everyone growing up, we were told that you know, like, oh, great, we have like that. Uh, we have, uh, you oh, this is great, we're so great. But what we, they don't tell you is with universal health care, you have no choice. They they choose whether you live or die. They choose whether to give you life saving care or not. And if you if you don't, we're like, well, you're out of luck. Sorry, you know, it's that's what happens when you don't have any choice. That's another downside. And with energy and all these other things, like in Ontario, if, uh, oh, if you don't get energy from them, well, you're you're screwed. And this also happened in BC right now. You, you know how, like, BC has one uh, car insurance uh, provider, right? Mm -hmm. what, what are they called, Stephen? I have no idea. Uh, it's like the BC, whatever, whatever it is. But yeah, they have one, you can only get your insurance, car insurance from one provider. And they said, like, oh, this could be, this could make it so much better for uh, no, they pay the highest prices yeah. of pretty much anybody in Canada. Why? Because they're nationalized. Because they're one, only one, one, one place in town to get your money. No competition. Hence, you pay like you pay through the roof. Yep. So yeah, yeah, bad ideas. But we do have to move on. Let's do so, it. So from the Boise State Public Radio, sponsors begin to drop after Idaho Republican Party blast Boise Pride Festival. So Idaho Republican Party Chair Dorothy Moon is urging businesses to pull their support from the Boise Pride Festival ahead of this weekend's events. Moon's statement issued Wednesday morning criticized the festival's sponsors for encouraging the sexualization of children. Instead of bringing investment and jobs to Idaho, Moon said they're financing the sexualization of our children and the perverse idea that children should engage in sexual performances with adult entertainers. Specifically, she's blasting an event for kids ages 11 to 18 who will perform in drag on stage. No kidding. And thankfully, there are companies which have dropped out. And one of them was Zion's Bank, which is originally incorporated under the direction of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Founder Brigham Young dropped its sponsorship in a statement posted to Twitter. They say that it wasn't aware of the kids' drag events when it partnered with the Boise Pride Festival and withdrew its participation, despite the fact that it says supports for its employees in the LGBT community remains unchanged. So they signed up as an orange level sponsor, which means it contributed at least $18,000 to the festival. So thank, thank you trying to back out on this. I'm hoping that this will spark more transition. I'm hoping that at least we can get the word out and change public opinion saying... Children should not even be anywhere close to these events. These are not family-friendly events. 
They've never been family friendly events. Pride events, drag events, all of these have always been about overt sexualization. And keeping that from children should be the highest priority. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a. Uh... I hear stories all the time. I've heard, I've, I've heard them for a long time, of children that were exposed to like things like pornography at a very young age, and then they're basically stuck in a lifestyle for like m most of their life. Uh, getting kids into sexuality or hyper hypersexualized lifestyles or anything like that way too early when they're not ready is is dangerous. And a lot of kids get into some very dangerous things if, they, if you're not careful. And the, the pride parades completely spit on that. They're like, they say they care about kids. They care about inclusivity. Like, no, 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 no. They want to expose kids. These are children before they hit puberty into a sexual lifestyle. That is not a safe thing to do. And the fact that they keep pushing that is pretty terrible. It is. Um, let's All do right. the Rebel News. So this yep. is a story from Rebel News. Stay up to date on COVID shots or problematic restrictions. Trudeau threatens. <laughs> you idiot. Okay. Uh, if we are able to hit... Um, sorry, I'm going to do it like, you know. If we are able to hit that 80, 95, or 90% of Canadians up to date in their vaccinations, we'll have a much better winter with much less need for the kind of restrictions and rules that were so problematic for everyone. Over the past years, Trudeau said. I know it doesn't sound like Trudeau. I'm trying to do a, a Gaston voice. <laughs> this guy's basically an overgrown Gaston. A pretty boy who's like dumb and uh, and, and malevolent. <laughs> On last night's episode of Ezra Levant's show, uh, he took a look at recent comments by Prime Minister Trudeau that indicate that lockdown restrictions could return if more Canadians don't get booster doses of the COVID vaccines. As winter comes and as people get pushed back indoors, there's a real risk of another serious wave of COVID, said Trudeau. One of the best things we can do to prevent this wave, prevent the pressure on our healthcare system, prevent provinces from having to take decisions around restrictions and mandates, is to ensure that everyone is up to date in their vaccinations. He sounds like a cult leader when he, like when he, have you heard him? He has like this robotic, like monotone voice that he does. It's like, uh, it's super creepy. Trudeau went on to say that if, if uh, that up to date is considered having received a dose of the COVID vaccine within the last six months, by the way, that changed uh, mm -hmm. because previously it was nine. Now it's six. Pretty soon it'll be four. Then it'll be two. Then it'll be like every month. Uh, who knows? And that new vaccines are coming out that are tailored to the Omicron variant, which has basically been completely rendered like, you yeah. know, like because very few people now if any, are dying like in large swaths from COVID, but not from the vaccines. So uh, this this article and this, this this comments from Trudeau are a classic example of fool me once, fool me twice. Like this guy, he has lied all the way through the COVID pandemic and he continues to lie now. He was already exposed. His panel, this COVID panel of experts supposedly, that were monitoring and giving recommendations. Not one of them was an actual medical expert of any kind, and they were pushing out political, uh, pro, uh, you know, political policy that had nothing to do with science. And yet he always the science. Um, I'm sorry, any Canadian that believes this malarkey, uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, you deserve to get what you got, because it's like if you've been fooled, like. Like, you know, like, oh, it's only only one more shot to be out of this. Only 80, 90, 85% will be out of this. Only this, only that. And, like, they just keep pushing it. And even after all, all Canadians did all their stuff, he still kept the Arrive Can app. He still kept people from flying out of the country. Like, this guy is a complete con artist. Um, I'm surprised that anyone actually believes anything that he says. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephen, by the way... Your video i know uh, my phone sure turned off happened. and i'm trying to reboot it no okay so um i apologize do you want me to read the, yeah you, the next story you yeah do? you can you got that figured out well i can i can read the next one so i apologize sure. for everyone i have an app on my phone in which i do my video which is why my video is very nice mm -hmm. but unfortunately sometimes if my phone crashes for some unknown reason apparently my phone died 
How did my phone the die? Was, dead? My phone was plugged in. Oh, weird. That is super weird. So I'm just going to read this, and then hopefully by the time... You're done, it'll come back. <laughs> we can yeah. see your lovely... It's just like having some cable issues. Hmm. But, <clears throat> anyways. Event right abruptly to platforms. What is a woman's screening event over alleged hate? That's just such a stupid thing. Yeah, event bright and event management platform to platform to scheduled Turning Point USA screening for the Daily Wires documentary What is a Woman for allegedly promoting hate. Mm -hmm. TP USA chapter at Western Kentucky University announced that the platforming of the on campus screening event for scheduled for September 13th. Maggie Fuchs, a TP USA field representative, posted a screenshot of an email announcing the decision. To remove the event from the platform. We encourage our organizers to express their views and gather for a chosen purpose. As long as it's done in a way that doesn't violate our legal terms, the email from Eventbrite, Trust and Safety read. We do not permit events, content, or creators that encourage hate, violence, or harassment towards others <coughs> or oneself. In this instance, we have determined that your event expresses views that are in violation of our community guidelines and terms of service and is therefore not permitted on the Eventbrite platform. Okay. So, notice about your event. We've reached out to you. We encourage our organizers, blah, blah, blah. They prohibit hate speech and hateful ideologies in any language that incites or promotes violence, intimidation, disparagement, harassment, or threats targeting an individual. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they also prohibit hateful speech that targets a person's gender identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is basically... The left likes to, they, they have the same vocabulary, but they have a different dictionary than we do. What they, when they say hate, they mean any opinion that they, they, that's pretty much what it means. And any, every single uh, company from Google to Facebook, to YouTube, to Eventbrite, uh, hate is a placeholder uh, word that is is intended and designed to be completely and totally subjective you'll notice none of these companies any 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 company any school any organization that shuts down something because it's hateful it's they never define it they don't have to because it's completely subjective it's like i think it's hateful therefore you must be like you know like you need to be shut down i had this debate with a lady um, on one of those lefty kind of groups, the women's rights uh, group that me and Stephen constantly uh, pull off and kind of chat, chat on. I tried to basically like point out the lady that, that I was like debating. I'm like, she's like, but what you said is hate speech. I'm like, you know what? That is it. Like, like you're saying it's hateful. And yet that is a completely subjective thing. Mm -hmm. You know, just cause you think it's hateful. I, I could also, I also could, could make a very valid argument. defending it's also hateful like it's it's completely subjective but it's basically this is the danger of of allowing anybody to use hate speech or hateful conduct or whatever as a rationale for shutting people down people don't realize the slippery slope that this has when you create a standard that basically says we can shut down anything we don't like and use hate speech as the excuse to do so that you've basically removed all boundaries it's now it's just whoever's whoever's in power can basically censor anybody that they like or don't agree with and that is an incredibly dangerous very dangerous uh thing to do and the worst part is the people who believe that um who truly believe that uh this is cool don't realize that this this can and probably will be used against them when they they're no longer in the right side of history or the right side of these people's ire. This is what happened in the, the Bolshevik Revolution. Everyone thought like, "Oh, good, we our side is in control. We're good now." And then then every every bit of power that they gave to these lunatics like Stalin was turned against them when they that suddenly stopped being useful to the revolution. Uh, so yeah, this this is a uh, example of the slippery slope that we're already like barreling down into yep and of yep. course like eventbrite 
it doesn't matter. Like they'll have they'll host pride events for children. Mm -hmm. They will host Drag Queen Story Hour, which of course is clearly abusive and harmful to children. But yeah. anything which criticizes the new hierarchy of the victim privilege pyramid, yep, can't go against that. That's too wonderful, and it must be promoted at all costs. Yeah, this is why free speech needs to be absolute. Because it completely and totally neutral garbage like this. Yep. Because, you know, and, and sadly, like, you know, like, you, Stephen and I talked talk a little bit about it. There was that guy on the weekend who commented on my post on Pride Parade. And he almost instinctively, like, almost immediately, by the way, after you respond, I'm going to, like, I'm going to remove you from, from Facebook and block you. It's like, yep. that's, every, that's every leftist, like, it's like, oh, you said something I don't like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to remove you, censor you, never let you speak again. Oh, that's good. You know, that's that's a that's a good way to create a uh, a free and like you know equitable society, a respectful society. It's conformity by by force. <laughs> ah, you're you're creating a great world here. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to the last story here. Um, so this is also from Rebel News. Rings of Power official account slam shows unwoke critics expresses solidarities. Solidarity with castmates of color. Of course, they do. This, they're they're going to double down. Um, obviously, the fans are mad and they're criticizing properly. And these idiots in power, like like all leftists, they can never admit that they're wrong. They'll never do it. So here's <laughs> speaking of which, here's what they said: We refuse to ignore it or tolerate. J.R.R. Tolkien created a world which, by definition, is multicultural. A world in which free peoples from different races and cultures join together in fellowship to defeat the forces of evil. Rings of Power reflects that. Oh, I'm still talking. So the official Rings of Power Twitter account is currently engaged in internet warfare with critics of the show, slamming those who've expressed their disdain for the show's plot and diverse casting. Again, it just shows, goes to show that the woke mob, the woke mob, the woke, the woke cult, will tolerate no dissent and no criticism of any kind. Conformity uh, is all that they will allow. Yep. And it's, yeah, this is why it just keeps getting worse. As the drama between the Lord of the Rings fandom, the show's creators continues. The Twitter account posted a statement of, you, okay, give me a break. Stop using unity. You, you basically, it's all about conformity to that. Yep. Uh, but they uh, posted a statement of solidarity with the show's cast and announced fans who were allegedly harassing them with threats, harassment, and abuse of some of our craft castmen of color are being subjected to on a daily basis. By the way, um, during Obi Wan, you remember what happened there, right, Stephen? That, mm -hmm. uh, black well, Leonardo I mentioned I mentioned it earlier because, of yeah. course, Moses Ingram was an actress, and yeah. in Obi Wan Kenobi. She was super flat, and her mm -hmm. character made very little sense. Mm -hmm. And her character was motivations just, were dumb. Yeah, character motivations were dumb. And everybody's just like, well, she's a poorly written character. And they're like, you're racist for critiquing her character. And we're like, no, she's just portraying, she's just not acting well. Mm -hmm. And her character is exceptionally poorly written because it's flat and one dimensional. And mm -hmm. her character's decisions don't make any sense. And they're like, we denounce the racism in our fan base. You're not a Star Wars fan if you don't like it. And it's like, mm -hmm. you can't just say because people are legitimately criticizing something that they're not fans of the rest of that group, the rest of that kind of franchise. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't like some of the Hobbit movies. I think... Some parts of the Hobbit movies are kind of dumb. That doesn't mean I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. I love Lord of the Rings. As soon as when my kids are old enough, they will watch Lord of the Rings because they are very, very well made movies. But the Hobbits are the Hobbit films are not as well made. Yeah, one of my one of my best friends, her family tradition every Christmas is to watch Lord of the Rings. And actually, they, they now they're swapping. So like uh, one year they'll watch the Lord of the Rings. Like all the movies, and one year they'll watch the Hobbit movies, <laughs> which I'm like, well, I mean, like I'd, I'd prefer to skip a skip a year, but <laughs> yeah, but still it worked because they like them. 
Uh, but this is this is the difference between uh, emotionally healthy people and emotionally stunted people. People who are emotionally healthy can handle criticism. They know how to handle it. You give me uh, something tough to swallow, I will consider it. I will analyze it to see if it make if it's a, a reasonable criticism, and then I'll respond appropriately. People who cannot handle um, criticism of any kind are usually the people that are mostly like you know like weak and stunted, and sadly, it 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 stunts your growth as well because if you can't learn from your mistakes, then you can't get better. Hollywood is going to get worse because they can't get better because they believe that everything that they do is perfect and you know like and beyond reproach, so they'll never improve. And this is the kind of garbage that they're putting out there. Uh, I mean, the Batman movie, like that, that uh, Batgirl movie, yep. that that it was, was canceled so by bad Marvel. that it got canceled. It's an example. It's an example of that. They, 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 these people, like, they don't want to make a good story. They want to make cultural ammunition for their woke propaganda, and they they don't care about making a good show. Uh, here's a good example. Uh, this this uh, this actual quote from the, I think it's from the Twitter account here. It says, "We refuse to ignore." It or tolerated. J.R. Tolkien. Like, uh, keep in mind, here they're 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 supposedly talking on his behalf. Like they know what J.R. Tolkien like uh, believes. So he said, J.R. Tolkien created a world which, by definition, is multicultural. No, no, this is a fantasy mm -hmm. world. This is not a. This is not Europe. In 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 in, uh, in in ancient world, this is a completely made up fantasy world. It's like Wakanda. There's a reason why everyone in Wakanda is black. It's because it's a completely fictional world that that, that was created. You can't just kind of hijack it. So no, it's not multicultural. I'm sorry. Uh, a world in which free peoples from different races, yes, races, but not in the same way as races not today. Ethnicities. Races, not ethnicity. Talking about different or, species. Yeah, orcs and elves are completely different from humans and from dwarves and from hobbits. They're not basically humans of different sizes and different races. This is this shows how little they understand this uh, this 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 thing that your Tolkien like you know actually created. Uh, it's so terrible. Uh, our world has never been all white. No, it hasn't. But this is not our world. Yeah, this is a fantasy created by J.R. Tolkien. It's kind of like going into, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, uh, C.S. Lewis's work. Um, uh, the the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe kind of world. Um, Narnia? Uh, Nar thank you, Narnia. Narnia. Narnia is a completely fictional world that C.S. Lewis created. All the creatures in there follow a certain like you know like a uh, format and style that cs lewis created there is no real world in narnia it's it's completely uh, but even then narnia is even more attached to the real world because it's a different world that mixes yeah. with the real world whereas lord of the rings it's not this is not earth i know they call it middle earth but this is completely fictional and it's meant for a english like you know, it's it's designed to be an English world. They just want to take it and 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 shove in their uh, their their woke uh, you know like garbage into this world. This is why people are mad. So it just shows how little the people who made this show care about the actual work. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I would be willing to bet that the people who created this series, like the actual like the the, the guy the guys who were in charge of the show. I, I'd be willing to bet that not ne neither one of them Lord of the Rings. Yep. I'd be willing to bet. I bet you they got some got kind of grip notes and just kind of skimmed it. Didn't really know. They're, they're kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Avatar Blaster. The, the... Like, you know, Avatar Blaster Avenger yep. and the whole world building that they created in Nickelodeon. Yep. Uh, the, the same director who created, who signed, and the Sixth Sense, um, he also, he took over, he basically took out a project to make those cartoons into live action. But he had such a fundamental un misunderstanding and completely broken uh, uh, understanding of the show or even of the lore or the history of that show that he called 
the titular character, Om. He couldn't even get his name right. His name Ang, not Ong. Like so this this is a this is what happens when Hollywood elites who don't know what they're doing, who don't understand the lore or the background, they ruin something. Uh yeah, like show that picture. What is that what did that show? Oh, that was that was Elijah Wood and other cast members of mm -hmm. the original Lord of the Rings uh, showing solidarity with the new cast. And they mm -hmm. have ears of all different types. And I don't know what this is supposed to say in, in it, Elvish. Uh, in Elvish, yeah. But it's, you are all welcome here. And it's like... Yeah, the... the Elijah. The thing is... No, these people are... They're Hollywood elites. I know. Everyone, everyone in Hollywood thinks the same. So it shows that they these people don't that their solidarity is with hollywood not with tolkien it just that it just goes to show how little the uh, people in hollywood care uh about like famous works of works of literature it's, it's also like no no insane how little he's aged compared to the other two yeah it's crazy because eh? dominic and billy boyd look old now yeah and he's just like i look the same well, he's always been young. He's oh he's yeah, he's the always had the baby woman. face. Well, he's, he's he was also the youngest, I think, on on that show. Even Sean Astin now looks much older. Oh, Sean Astin looks so old. Mm -hmm. But Elijah Wood is uh, was by far the youngest of of all of them. Yeah. So sadly, Rings of Power. I mean, if you want to watch it, go for it. Um, I it's it suffers from the same problems as She Hulk. Uh, the writing is really terrible. The dialogue is bad. The characters are insufferable and unlikable. And uh, the world building is just not there. And most, a lot of the stuff that happens is nonsensical and very... It's just a bad show. So, I mean, if you want to watch it, go for it. I'm not going to watch it. I just don't want to waste my time investing into watching a show. That I already know it's going to be a train wreck. Um, I, I don't feel like doing it, so I don't know. It's a lot of time, in, in, a lot of time investing in something that I don't think is kind of, kind of like the reason I will not watch Lost. You know the the TV series. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to watch it because I'm like, well, I've already I've already heard that is <laughs> that, that it was great at first, but then had a terrible payoff. Kind of so jumps, like, jumps the trip, jumps the shark. Yeah, jumps the shark. So I'm like, why start something that you? Know yep, I get that. I get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> all right, we do have to one. move on. Yeah. And talking about all this race and gender and all this nonsense, they're accusing Lord of the Rings fans of being racist. Mm -hmm. But they will never accuse these type of people of being racist, despite their obvious racism. So. Let's check that out. Okay. So, treat them like... Mm, U.S. Senate candidate under fire for comments about white people. Crystal M Matthews. That is the weirdest way of selling crystal. Crystal. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it seems like gristle. I shall pronounce it Crystal. Is a Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate who is seeking to unseat South Carolina's longtime junior Senator Republican Tim Scott. I don't like mm -hmm. Tim Scott, but she's much worse. Mm -hmm. She was already considered <laughs> a long shot, but she now faces additional challenges after reportedly being caught in an undercover audio recording, making a few racially charged and controversial comments. Come on, ABC, just say it's racist. <laughs> I'm no stranger to white people. I'm from a mostly white town. Matthews can be allegedly heard saying in an audio recording, according to Project Veritas. And let me tell you one thing. You ought to know when you're dealing with, like, you got to treat them like, I mean, that's the only way they respect you. Matthews went on to say that she keeps white people under her thumbs because otherwise they would get under out of control like kids, according to the alleged audio recording. And let's watch mm. some of that. Because Lovely. it's horrifying. My district is heavily Republican and it's heavily white. Wow. You're not a stranger to white people. I'm from a mostly white town. Yeah. And let me tell you one thing. You gotta know who you're dealing with. Like, yeah. you, you gotta treat them like 
Like, yeah. That's the only way yeah. to respect you. Yeah, no. I, I, I keep them right here, like, under my thumb. Like, yeah. that's where I keep them. Like, yeah. that, you have to. Like, yeah. Otherwise, they get out of control like kids. Trust me. <laughs> so, you know, like, for me, all these other people are tiptoeing around them, and I'm like, well, that's a white yeah. and I ain't doing that. They yeah. be like, yeah. Yeah. well, I'm just going to say it's a white Yeah. And that was my problem with Bernie, because he was talking to an all-black crowd, and he was afraid to say black A lovely lady. My yes. So additional wow. audio recording brought to light by Project Veritas reveals Matthews allegedly talking to an inmate inside South Carolina's Perry County Correctional Institution about bringing gang members into the political realm. We need someone who can understand street gangs so we can clean up and put on an effing suit. He can be heard saying to the inmate, we need ends that watch where's the gangsters, where the street ends at. So you can be heard talking on the phone about on the phone with the inmate about bring forward one organized gang manager who is very political to infiltrate the other side and everything. Mm-hmm. The national desk reached out to Matthew's campaign for a comment on the audio recording, but did not hear back. No kidding. Yeah. This is horrifying. Oh yeah, it's pretty terrible. Because um, yeah, they yeah. changed the definition of racist, like yeah. not officially, mm-hmm. but in some more politicized dictionaries and politicized sources. They do yep. offer an alternative definition of racism that is, <clears throat> what is it? Prejudice and power yeah. and can so only can you, be done from whites. I'll, I'll look actually, it up. Yeah. You no, know, look it up. I sent you a, a message on, on Facebook Messenger yep. with an article that kind of like goes into it. But um, for anybody who's not unaware, so most of, uh, for most of our like last 50 years, uh, since the civil war, civil rights movement, uh, led by Martin Luther King Jr., um, the whole goal was colorblindness, right? The idea is that all men are equal, and hence everyone should be treated equally under the law, and everyone should be treated like you know, like you, you, like you should not get worse treatment uh, by a police officer if you're black or you're white. It should be uniform, right? And the ideal is to treat everyone equally, not by what they look like, but by their character and their actions and their all that kind of stuff, right? However, the CRT movement, which uh, it started off in a, as you uh, as something that uh, that was only taught in law school, has now taken over the culture, and they have completely flipped everything on its head. And now they've they've basically told black people, you can be the most horrible human being. Possible. And we're going to provide you cover because it, it's like, you know, they, they can say like, oh, it's not racist. It's it's the epitome of the leftist uh, mind virus, yeah. which is that pretty much everything, you know, nothing we do is racist because we can't be racist, which is the most insane comment ever. So, yeah, like take, take, in, take into that. So, um, yes, from article. this article. So just kind of briefly skimming it. No black people cannot be racist. There's why. Claiming that black people can be racist too implies that there is a shared equity on the racial hierarchy, but it is as antithetical to the creation and purpose of the racial hierarchy. Further, there is no race science that places black people in a position of genetic superiority over white people. Racism is born from the legislated right to practice white supremacy in 1681. Nope. It is the legislated right to hold superiority over others based on skin color. Black people were legislated to be inferior from the manufactured group legislated as white people. Yeah, you know what that's from? That's from, uh, b- because back in like the 1600s, and all, they still had slaves. And mm-hmm. primarily slaves were black. Hence, most of the legislation that was written in was intended to try to find a way to create, you know, to try to find a way to create laws that reflected their beliefs on the superiority or inferiority of like, you know, like a, of, yeah. of slaves to their, to their masters. I mean, obviously that language is something that was true back then, but we've we've changed since then. They they, they try to deny that this change has even happened. Continue. Yeah. So black people cannot be what was never legislated to them. Black people can only create methods of coping to survive the legislated inferior status and that would include any form of reactionary retaliatory response to the reality imposed on this power dynamic. In order for one to be racist, they must identify 
but the perception of legislated power associated with the group established as white people. This identity, furthermore, is validated by race science and the objective data to support a framework of racial superiority, a product of European and American aristocracy. Race science has established a false concept of separate races rather than the one human race. What? This is the kind of like no. Nonsense. This yeah, is nonsense. absolutely nonsense. Mm -hmm. This entire so this argument serves to try and say that. Well, it serves to try and say that a only white people can be racist, mm -hmm. and then b it's like well, the idea of different races is because of white people, and it's like no, yeah. no. This is by yeah. it's an objective fact. It's something that you can learn by looking at someone. Mm -hmm. For 95% of the people, you can look by looking at them, you don't even have to ask them what race they are because it's self evident. Yeah. Well, but but even more, like, yeah, the, the, I don't know if you know this, but the whole concept of racism, like the way that we think of it today, comes from the, uh, the, the origin of species. Because um, Charles Darwin actually created, like, I, I don't know if you actually know, do you know, do you actually know the actual of uh, the origin of species? The what of the origin of species? The, the actual name, the actual name of the, the, the full title of the origin of species. Do you know what it is? Look it up while, while, we're, while we're talking, actually, because it's, it's, it's something that, like, if you haven't, like, you know, actually looked into it, uh, it you should. It's, it, it was something that uh, when I heard about it, I was holy crap. Um, because the, the uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you look it up. But uh, the reason I bring this up is because the origin uh, was the foundation for like race, like the idea that some races are superior to others? Ooh. This is what, yeah. What is it? What is it? Okay, well, I'll show it. To, I'll show it to everybody. Yeah, put it up on the screen. On the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races and the struggle for life. Hmm. Funny how in the exact the actual title of Charles Targ was, you know, like you know, major book. The preservation of favored races. This was actually something that he developed in his book. When I saw this, I was like, "What? What?" That was actually like the the the, the title that we we all know it by is a shorthand. The full title is basically, "Oh, Charles Darwin's a freaking racist." <laughs> yep. Like, yes, he's the one that created it. And this is the foundation that Hitler used to justify the superiority of the the German the Aryan race. This is the foundation that uh, Margaret Sanger used to justify the elimination of the black uh, of the, the Negro, the black population, and this is the foundation for what these people today believe that oh, one one race is superior than the other, right? And they basically say that like you know, oh, the white white people are inherently by nature of their race uh, the oppressors, the oppressor mm -hmm. race. Uh, go to uh, go to South Africa. Yeah, and tell me that because right now Things white people are not looking so good for white people. White people are not doing well, and that that is a case study in the idea that oh, black people never be racist because they're and they'll probably say that because historically they they were they were oppressed. I'm like they yeah. were marginalized. No, yeah, but historically it doesn't matter that. compared to what's actually happening. Yeah, and and go to any other country in the world. And you'll find that racism exists in Asia. You oh, go to Asia, racism Korea, is alive and well. Words like Japanese people. Japanese people can't stand Chinese people. Chinese people can't stand any other Asian country. They think they're the best. I mean, Tim's convenience. 1942, uh, 1952, Japan yeah. invaded Korea. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Kim, Mr. Kim. Exactly. Uh, but then, then always you attack Japan, to Japanese people. You go to Africa. Look at what the. Uh, 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 Idi Amin. Idi Amin kicked out all of the Asians from his country, from Uganda, because he he blamed them for like basically taking advantage of his people and all that. And yeah. these people had done nothing wrong. That was racism. I don't know. Does it count? Because they they looked down on them. The Rwandan uh, genocide was that racism? The Tutsis thought they they the, what, I don't know if the Tutsis were the dominant or the or the ones who were massacred, but one 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 group. Thought that the other group was inferior. Is that racism? You can have racism within your own, like, you know, like your own race. The idea here that this woman is living on um, is that you can't be racist, hence, you basically have 
a get out of jail free card, essentially. I can do anything. I can say anything, no matter no matter how racist, no matter how prejudiced, and I can get away with it because I'm I'm black. And and it's funny because they talk about the white like the white privilege, but Stephen, can you actually go anywhere and use the you know the white privilege card, like and, and be like you know like oh well I'm I, I'm, I'm white I'm privileged. White. Yeah. Well, I, I think I mean, back to that. I think back to that Beavis and Butthead sketch. <laughs> I, I'm my privilege. It's like <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I don't you know? I'm white privileged. It's like <laughs> this was well done. This was well done. Yeah, it was well done because they, they 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 lampooned the whole idea. But the the whole idea of like that you have some magic privilege because you're white does not. It's like it's a book. It's a book. It's nonsense. It doesn't but however, the idea that you have black privilege and uh, gay women privilege. privilege and gay privilege, privilege is an actual thing. That is actually something that will actually get you up. somewhere. Get you that advancements. Get you if you're yeah, white, because... oh my gosh, you have. You're not going to have advancements. You're not going to have any sort of benefits from being yeah. white. You're actually singled out, and there's a whole bunch of negative repercussions, mm-hmm. especially in terms of like you'll be silenced. Like yeah. you and I have been told right. so many flipping times. <laughs> that we can't be involved in certain discussions because we're men, we're white, we are conservative. Mm-hmm. They they try and exclude people for all of these things because oh well historically you were benefited. Yes, historically we were benefited, but we're not now. No, and not in, current not discrimination way. is not a solution to past discrimination. Um, no matter what Ibram X Kendi says, he's a moron. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, uh, this is what people are indoctrinated with. Uh, to uh, even since since we're young, uh, last night's episode of Tim Cast IRL featured a girl that used to be part of the, uh, the, the like yeah yeah she was part she was originally part of the extremely far left like you know uh, leftists right volunteered for Democrats and that's, volunteered for Democrats she campaigned she believed everything that they believed. Eventually, though, she started to see that there were some very serious problems in not only what they, they taught, but what they believed. To the point where like the, the people that she talked to said some outrageously prejudiced and like horrible things. And she was like, What? No, like that cannot be right. Basically, the guy was saying, like, one of the people that she asked, uh, she's like, you know, like my my family is white, part of her family is white. Mm-hmm. And she's like, they're not horrible people, like you're you're saying. It's like, well, I'm sorry you have all this like internalized like um, internalized uh, racism and racism or something like that. And she's like, what? It, it was it was it was insane, right? And this is what this is the problem. What happens when you? This is why we say CRT is not just bad; it's dangerous mm-hmm. because what it does is it empowers and emboldens people to be horrible, to be as horrible as they want to be. And they get away with it. This is how you create a really, well, and it's it's meant really to toxic. it's meant to cause strife and it's meant to cause conflict, because yeah. the entire purpose is to try and denigrate white people and promote other minorities. And then eventually, when whites when whites and Caucasians are like, mm-hmm. "Well, no, this is nonsense. Like that's completely unfounded." They're like, yeah. "Well, you're just experiencing racism, and no matter what we do to you, that's not racist." And it's like. Mm-hmm. Well, how are we supposed to defend ourselves you from can't. this point? And then, of course, eventually, people are going to be left with no other decisions, with no other choices. You are mm-hmm. going to proceed to violence, as I said on Tuesday: censor and silence, no cause but violence. Mm-hmm. Because that's where it's going. In all of these things, you will get to violence. And that's either, that's what they wanted. Either the people who are emboldened, like the black people, yep, will be emboldened to basically they're, they're like, well, we they'll, get they'll be the first ones to commit violence. And then the people who are being like, you know, and then the people who are actually being abused anger. currently will eventually strike out and lash out at their new oppressors. Mm-hmm. So it's an endless cycle. Brought to you by the establishment elite. Here for yeah, you, you know. This- 
This is why, like, you know, like, uh, so the Republicans have MAGA, like the MAGA hat. We should definitely make a hat for, uh, like, the, you know, the, the, the leftist, uh, uh, Repo like, Democrats. You know, Mistrica, Mistrica, M-R-G-A. You know what that stands for? Make Republicans. Make no. racism great again. Because mm. no, really, that's no, what that's they're doing. Trudeau. They're bringing racism back. Trudeau has made racism great again. Oh, he sure has. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, boy, that guy. All right. So that's probably going to end today's show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're following us on our video platforms, such as YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, and YouTube, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the above. If you've been mm -hmm. watching live on Twitch and Facebook, thank you for those who commented, participated in the chat. It was fun. Mm -hmm. It was engaging. Yeah. We hope that yeah. more and more people contribute because that makes the show more fun and engaging and interactive. And you can, you can be a part of the show. That's fun. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's and you don't have cool. to manage all this goofy tech stuff, which is oh, annoying. selling. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying how painful of my life is. No. <laughs> and of course, if you're following us on our text platforms, such as Gitter, Twitter, Parlor, and Facebook, like, mm -hmm review because we get review bombed all the time there was another one just the other day <laughs> oh really was oh yeah it was like fun. oh so boring and it was like promoting terrorism and i'm like we're promoting terrorism <laughs> i'm like this is new terrorism. Oh, and I was, it's always the same because i'm like dude like if you want to come on the show and try and explain your points go for it yeah. and then it's just like crickets no i'm like yeah hmm, maybe mm -hmm. you have no point <laughs> it's like scott scott i I, you just don't get it. It's like, I said, shh, shh. Got a whole bag of shh. Put your name on it. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. Exhibit A. <laughs> exactly. So, all of those things try and overcome the leftist review bombing because it's just getting nonsense and silly at this point. Mm -hmm. But with all that being said, Danny, sign us out. So, we are the Shrewd Dudes, and we always like to remind why be rude when you can be shrewd instead all right have a great weekend everybody we will see you on tuesday for our tuesday news day actually no we will Ooh! see you on saturday saturday for our coverage of the results mm. of the canadian leadership election or the mm. canadian conservative party leadership election um i'm f sort of sure that tate will show up and join us mm. if you want to join us just to kind of hang out i and talk about the canadian conservative party how you feel go mm -hmm. for it it's gonna be I mean, it's totally fun i may not be there my mom wants to uh go to banff on the, on, on the weekend okay so. then <laughs> well maybe people won't see us on saturday i'll just be live tweeting oh steven will do it steven will make it happen <laughs> so we'll see might be fun mm. might be not yeah, yeah. okay well go i think no. okay go no. predictions who's Daniel gonna win Smith? I think they no, most, no. Most got a Canadian conservative. Oh, you mean like the Canadian? Oh, the federal. The oh, provincial one Pierre. is not going to be decided until Pierre. October. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, Pierre. Pierre's going to win. By, I mean, I, don't, I, I think, think Pierre's going to win too. I mean, Less than Lewis is like there, but she's not there. She'll she'll get like she's she'll get a significant solid, portion. I think she'll get solid second place. Oh yeah. Because all the other ones like Roman Baber doesn't have that much support. Jean Charest doesn't have that much support, and then the other guy I've never even heard of. Way. Uh oh, who was? Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Like, yeah, he's he's kind of like. I a, was like, he's in the I, race, huh? I don't even know where he's from, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what so, his history is? No brand recognition, no name recognition. Fairly certain uh, that Pierre Polyev is going to win, which is yeah. good for the Canadian Conservative Party as long as he does well, not squish like Sheer before. Him. Yeah, thank thank goodness that like John Brown isn't in there. I mean, clearly, damn, he was a, a shoe in for winning, like you know the. Conservative leadership race. Thank goodness he's not, not in there. Did you I hear mean, his comments? No. He actually said something along that line. He's like, they got rid of me because they know I'm going to win. It's like, are, are you freaking kidding me? Who are you? John Brown? He was the mayor of Brampton. Oh. He was the, he was the one no, who... No, no, no. Patrick Brown. Patrick, Patrick Brown. Brown? Oh, Patrick Brown. Okay, sorry. Patrick Brown. I was like, who the heck is John Brown? And I'm like, no, Patrick, Patrick Brown. Because Patrick, Patrick Brown, Brown had some issues with Rebel News because Patrick Brown like broke his own COVID policies and was a dick. That's right. This is how inconsequential he is. I can't. I, 
he's not even worth remembering his actual mm. but who are you again patrick brown no i'm talking <laughs> about you <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> my name is senior sweetness no senior sweetness all right so well, yeah i think it's gonna be uh paul f and i think that's a good thing that is a good thing that is a good thing mm-hmm. but anyways yeah. we'll check it out we'll definitely have more intrigue into the alberta election because it's yeah. a closer fight and because the ucp has just devolved into some really nasty infighting infighting and it's gone and it's now yeah. like two factions yeah. it's now like the Kenny V2s versus Smith yeah. and Todd Lowen. Well, yeah, it's been crazy because, like, uh, even like John, what's that guy? Um, not John Pierre. Um, there's Daniel Smith, and who's the, the, the second most likely candidate? Uh, uh, after Taves? Travis Tice. No, not Taves. Oh, Gene? Uh, Gene, yeah, Brian Gene. Brian Gene. Yeah. So, Brian Gene. Uh, yeah, he had an attack time, thing against Smith that he released today. He did. And so a lot of people have actually kind of said, like, you know, Brian G, with his little, like, uh, speech or, like, you know, a public statement or whatever, kind of basically pledged, like, you know, that he's in the camp with uh, Kenny. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, they, they devolved into two different things. I thought it was crazy that the lieutenant governor actually, like, opined on Daniel Smith and her uh, her thing. I was like, that's that's insane. It's it's getting downright nasty. And, mm-hmm. like, I hate that. I hate that, like... Uh, Rachel Notley is sitting in her, like, stroking her yeah, hairless excellent. cat. Be like, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I know. Like, Curse you, Notley. No. You ruined our province. Yeah, she did. Anyways. And sadly, she has a good chance of winning. So, we'll see. Yeah. So, see you on Tuesday for Tuesday News Day. We'll see yeah. you on Saturday. I'll keep everybody mm-hmm. informed. But until then, have a great weekend. And as always, God bless. Good night, everybody.